The Nigeria police forces asked presidential candidates to warn party supporters against provocative comments that can trigger violence during the coalition of election results. In a statement on Monday, MPF spokesperson Olumuyiwa Adejobi said Nigerians have high expectations for the election. Adejobi said supporters must not put pressure on the Independent National Electoral Commission, noting that citizens have the responsibility to ensure the country is protected against chaos. He called on Nigerians to maintain peace and also urged INEC to ensure quick coalition of the results. We now have joining us uh, for some comment, the Lagos State Police uh, Public Relations Officer, Mr. Benjamin Houdain. You're very welcome, sir. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. On so the we're going we're gonna to get right to it. We really want to jump into this. You made a statement after there was a viral video of some uh, uh, voters being attacked um, in the presence of members of your force, police officers. Video shows that they were right there. And I, I want to give you a chance to clarify your comment. Maybe we'll ask you if you misspoke or if you want to back it up and explain to listeners. You said, quote, that what did we expect the police officers to do? So can you, if you didn't misspeak, can you clear it up? I, or, or? I don't have any further explanation to make. That is clear enough. <coughs> It's simple English. What did you expect them to do? Okay, so I just I, let me let me go to Wikipedia here. I just want to read something for everybody, just in case, just so people are clear. The Nigeria Police Force is the principal law enforcement and the lead security agency in Nigeria. Security means protection. So if an individual is being attacked and there is literally a police officer standing there, what what the, the word security? What does that mean to you? See, I'll tell you something. In every part of the world, when um, someone is being attacked, the police steps in. But when that attack is beyond the capacity of that police officer, anywhere in the world, he would call for backup. So in that particular instance, these were unarmed police officers, these were thugs that outnumbered these police officers. So the right thing for them to have done there was to call for backup. And while that video was being made, backup was on its way. Nobody um, bothered to stay and see the backup arrive and also show that in the video. Okay, so j just to follow up here, um, you're saying that the police officer that is standing there while the attack is placed, place, he is incapacitated and unable... Un I, would, unable I would throw the question oh, back Sorry, what, what you want to read your statement? Here it is. What exactly did you want two, not one, two unarmed police officers to do in this scenario? Everyone agreed from the onset that armed officers will not be at polling units so as not to scare voters away while awaiting armed back up they observed diligently um there was a big display of president buhari showing equipment weapons we had the riot squad with the, the, the batons and everything displaying a whole lot if two officers are in place are you saying that because the, the video showed the number of people that were there there was nothing that two officers could do they would just sit no, there and I'm allow asking them you, you've read wikipedia you've referred to some other things so yeah. i'm asking you what do you think in an ideal situation they should have done they would step in and stop the attack how by, by their training. They're, they're trained in armed combat. You, if you don't have a weapon or a gun, you have pepper spray or you have a baton. You've got something that... Mr. Onde, let me ask you this. If your okay. family member was in front of you being attacked, it was your, your, your family member or your relatives or somebody that was close no, to you... No, we don't need to put sentiments in this. No, no, that, no that's what I'm asking. That's what I'm asking, though. No, you don't need to put sentiments in okay. So you were not on ground, yeah. and the police officers are on ground, and they assess the situation and feel like this, we shouldn't step in this. We, just, we shouldn't step into this. Let's call for backup, which they did. So why do you fault that? Okay, so that means that if, uh, if you are saying on air, live, in front of everyone, that the police who are trained to protect citizens, if a police officer, and we've seen numerous videos from around the world where police officers put themselves in harm's way. Let me remind you of a viral video from Brazil where there was an attack in the middle of the street and an off-duty police officer stepped in to stop the attack. Um, supermarkets, malls, everywhere. If a police officer is, in pres in, is standing in an area where people are being attacked, they will sit back and not do anything you've and chosen, call for backup. You've chosen Brazil. I would also talk about other countries where police get to um, uh, a scene of attack and they'll step back into the vehicle to call for backup. Cynthia, I think you want to guys want yeah, to go on. Mr. Onday, thank you for your... Thank you for your um, what you've explained. But I'd like you to you know, tell us the parts that we didn't see, because you touched on that a little bit. You mentioned that we didn't see the backup arrive, that we did not see how that situation played out. So can you tell us what transpired beyond that video? Please? Okay, I'm going to tell you, in several polling units, um, we received distress calls that people were being attacked. And what we did was to dispatch patrol vans there. And in most of these polling units, Patrol vans got there, I mean, armed officers got there and stopped the attack from happening. In this particular one, yes, like I said, the video showed men attacking, I mean, destroying things. But 
we got um, a distress call, and the patrol team was dispatched. So if the patrol team got there and discovered that, oh, the attack had um, finished, the boys had escaped, like where I visited personally in Mafoluku, we got there and we discovered that um, ballot boxes and um, ballot papers had been burnt. Okay, so we get there and they have been burnt. So we got there late. That is the fact. But that does not mean that um, backup did not go there. So, so, <laughs> so, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because from what we understood, um, how things were supposed to play out, at the polling units, the officers were not supposed to be armed. But not too far away, there were supposed to be armed officers. So how long did the backup take to get there? If in the this particular time instance, had it's obvious in this particular instance that the backup did not get there on time. And Is don't there forget, any and for that? I, there, there are a couple of reasons. We were responding to many issues that day, and people are shying away from the numerous um, polling units where we saved the day. So it could be, I, I can't pinpoint this particular case, but it could be that they were responding to another um, um, distress call and they were coming back. So were any arrests made? Will we see any individuals being paraded? Will there be interrogation so we can understand who was behind the attack? Who motivated it? Who sent these people? Okay, so at the State Criminal Investigation Department, we have a political and electoral offenses unit set up for this particular election. And um, they've been working. Um, I can confirm that they have um, 23 suspects in custody. From this particular incident or across Not that Lagos? polling unit in Lagos State, across Lagos Only 23. on Saturday. Yes. From uh, hundreds of distress calls, only 23 arrests. Hundreds of distress calls, 23 arrests okay. made, and um, investigation has commenced, and it's going to be swift. Once investigations are concluded, they'll be arraigned. Um, we have an ele there's, um, of course, we can't verify these things, but there is worries as opposed to, um, with respect to the March 11th gubernatorial elections, um, with respect to the safety of voters, right? What's now, again, what, there was two police officers, so clearly that wasn't enough and they had to call back up. So now it looks like the threshold now is to call back up if there's not enough there. What steps are being taken to order to make sure that um, Lagosians that cast their votes on March 11th in the very important gubernatorial election will be safe? What measures are you taking? Well, we'll, we'll try to, to be closer from what we've learned in this past events to be closer to the polling units. Don't forget, we don't want to negate, negate the, the, or we don't want to violate the provisions of the Electoral Act. Armed men are not supposed to be seen by voters. Um, voters should not feel too scared to go to the polling units. So if people are saying that we did not do well, then the only solution to this is to actually get closer to the polling unit. Uh, but we don't want complaints where voters would say there were, there were armed men all around and all of that. So we'll find a way to balance it all to make sure that um, the, the coming elections are far better in terms of security than those ones that just passed. What about in cases on, in, in polling units where we heard that there were no um, security agents present? Can you explain why that was the case? Well, I don't know if you're talking about Lagos because there are so many stories flying around the internet. People even ask me about something that's happened in Abuja, so I don't know if you're talking about Lagos. But what I can confirm to you is that in Lagos, um, we had 13,325 polling units, and um, we posted policemen to all of these polling units. So it's a different thing if someone goes to a polling unit very early in the morning before police arrived and said, oh, there are no police officers. And 30 minutes or an hour later, policemen arrived, and the person refused to update us that policemen have arrived. But I, I'm so sorry, <laughs> by, if I may. Um, to be honest, you know, it's, we know it was, a, it was, there were so many unpredictable elements that that took place on election day. And even though you stand by the statement that you made, the, the biggest room is room for improvement. What were the observations that you made or what were the challenges that you experienced as a force that you may, maybe in terms of maybe being equipped or whatever, because I can't, you're the, you're the one who can actually do justice to this. Where were, were you lacking in terms of challenges? Well, I'm going to say this. <laughs> I said it earlier that we had uh, we, we have 13,325 polling units in Lagos. We had issues in 28 polling units. So over 99% of the polling units, there were no issues. And for those that had issues, hundreds of distress calls that we received were able to attend to majority of them, except for 28. So um, if you ask me, we are fed well but we would try to make the other one better, I mean, the coming election better. But if you ask me, we did well. So you are saying that um, where, where did we lack of... What were the challenges you experienced? 
We tried well. We, we were up and doing all through the day. We, we kept moving from one point to the other. So I'll just urge the political class to, to reach out to their supporters, not to, not to go into violence. If we have less violence, then it will be less trouble for us and things will be better. And I have seen on your social media, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, you said some intelligence has reached you about some potential disturbances that uh, some unsavory forces uh, are, are plotting. And of course, you've appealed to people. But uh, apart from that, what are some of the risk assessments that have been done? Are you able to give specific details as to some of the hotspot areas as well uh, that you're planning for with the intelligence that has come well, to you? Well, I wouldn't go into specific details, um, but I'm going to say that every part of Lagos is under um, our leader. We are not giving any, any part of Lagos um, a, a more protection than okay, You don't than feel there are any hotspots? There, there are hotspots, but I don't want to say, oh, this is the hotspot, so this is where we'll focus on. I, I wouldn't let it out so that um, the, 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 the miscreants would know that, oh, they've discovered our hotspot, let's move elsewhere. But we know the hotspot and we would, we would, we would um, deploy our security apparatus as needed for all of these spots. Well, do you have any any statements you want to make for anyone who is feeling unsafe and doesn't want to come out on March 11 to cast their votes, especially for that like lady, the lady who was stabbed in the face, right, has become a symbol of this election so far. Well, what do you say to Lagosians to assure them that they can come out with full confidence and feel safe? Because I think the, the number two biggest things for anybody who wants to cast their votes is one, I'll be safe when I'm doing it, and two, my vote will be counted. Well, what's your message to Nigerians? Well, I'm going to say the same thing I said a few days to the last election. You know, I wrote out the, the complaints numbers, um, emergency numbers, the numbers of our um, control room, and I ended it with um, stay safe. So I'm going to advise people to come out. The, the kind of deployments you saw, you would see again, probably better. We are going to, we're already working with sister security agencies. But most importantly, when you come out, stay safe. We, are, we, 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 we interviewed some people who told us that, oh, immediately we saw these boys, we ran for safety. That's the way to go. Stay safe and do not hesitate to reach out to us so that we can do the needful. Would you um, say, uh, for those who might think to an extent, you know, that have formulated in their minds that for some reason, maybe some of your officers might have been compromised to an extent. What do you have to say to them to okay. correct that impression? Uh, no, 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 we can't rule out that possibility. And that was why um, the Police Service Commission sent their staff to Lagos to monitor the conduct of officers. If there was zero possibility of officers um, compromising, then there wouldn't be need for monitors. The Ministry of Police Affairs to send monitors to Lagos to monitor the conduct of police officers. The Nigeria Police Force itself sent monitors from force headquarters to monitor the conduct of officers. So um, it's just, is it 48 hours now that the elections um, yeah, yeah, took place? Yeah. So um, we are expecting feedback from people. I've seen one or two videos online of somebody giving police officers money and they collected the money in uniform and put it in their pockets. I can't confirm if it's Lagos, but we are we are gathering all of these facts. And not just the Police Service Commission, Ministry of Police Affairs, they are gathering all of these facts. And the political desk, um, political and electoral offenses units at the state CID2 are gathering all of these facts. So in a couple of days, we should see the reports of these monitoring exercises. And officers that are found culpable will be dealt with accordingly. Now, uh, what is your assessment of the security situation when we look at this? I know we're still in the post-election phase. It's very early in the day. Uh, but when we compare where we are now versus where we were last election, uh, what's your assessment of our security situation in Lagos? Have things improved or have you seen a deterioration of people's behavior during uh, elections? Things have improved. The major problem is fake news. People blow things out of proportion. People bring old videos and say this is what's happening. People bring videos from another state and say this is what's happening in Lagos. For example, this morning um, in Mandela's, some traders decided that they were going to open their shops. But this market association, because we did our investigation, I'm not just doing guesswork here. We approached the market association and, and we saw it from the uh, minutes of last meeting that oh, everybody agreed that shops would not be opened Sunday and Monday. So yesterday everybody complied, but by today some people said, no, we would like to open our shops. And some other people you know, challenged them that you cannot open your shops and they chased them away. Now the person that um, talked about this online, and it, it went viral, 
Many people tagged me to it like, Ben, you would not talk now. You would not talk. Now, the, the person that talked about it said, Igbos. He said it. Igbos are being attacked. They are being robbed. They are being chased in Lagos. Uh, well, I, I corrected it. I said, yes. Most of the traders, Igbo traders, decided not to open shop today. And some people actually attacked them, chased them away. But we sent our patrol team there immediately to quell all of that. And now our officers are there to ensure that there is peace. Anybody that wants to open their shop, that, that's for the market to decide, but we will not allow people to get um, attacked. So now, that was just Mandela's. To my surprise, it's all over our social media, that they're attacking Igbo's in Oyibo. They're attacking Igbo's here, attacking Igbo's there. So that is the major problem we have. The security situation in Lagos is calm, it's safe, but people keep spinning rumors. And uh, people have been calling me, journalists have been calling me, is it true that the whole of Lagos is on fire? No, Lagos is not on fire, just Mandela, and we have quelled that. So the major issue is fake news. I wish people would desist from fake news, and I wish more people would um, cross-check things before they believe them and share same. I want to ask you something. Um, so in, the average Nigerian provides their own water through a borehole. The average Nigerian provides their own electricity through generators. I mean, if you look at what's happening in South Africa now with ESCOM, they are they're where they are because they don't have generators and they're not used to the fact that they'd have to provide their own. But the average Nigerian provides their own water, provides their own electricity, and to some extent provides their own security. The, the constitution does not allow for Nigerians to arm themselves, right? Would your job, would the job of the police be easier if that changed, that Nigerians are allowed to bear their own arms and protect themselves? Well, um, it's not my decision to make. It's, it's about um, legislation. So if Nigerians, through their representative, can pass a bill to say we want to get armed, and it kills the first reading, the second reading, and it becomes law, yes, we would support it. It will become the everyday thing. But it's not for me to say, for now, we work with the law. We are law enforcement officers. We enforce whatever laws the people have made. So I don't want to decide that. I don't want to recommend. Let the people take it upon themselves to decide what they want. Now, as a follow-up to what you mentioned earlier, you know, with misinformation and also disinformation, I know that it played a huge role during the, these elections. I particularly decided, personally decided to stay off by off social media during the elections. But we, um, Meta, for instance, and Google were supposed to be collaborating with the federal government, you know, for the elections on the 25th. And I'm just wondering what... Um, more collaborative effort do you think we need to see in order to ensure that things are in better control ahead of the March 11th elections? Well, we, we have all the collaboration we need. Um, particularly, I would say in terms of security, the most important collaboration was ISIS, the mm -hmm. Intelligence Consultative Committee on Election Security. All federal government security agencies are part of it. Even the INEC is part of it. So the collaboration is there and it's working fine. I think where the problem is, is the political class. The need to talk to their followers. The need to talk to their followers to, to stay away from violence. I'll tell you something. Um, election observers from the European Union came to see the commissioner of police. I know they were asking, what are your security plans? What do you have in place? I know the commissioner of police in um, CP, the World War I, Ask them, after I answer them, ask them, in your country, how do you handle elections? Let's, let's compare notes. What do you do in your country? And, you know, I remember particularly that this woman, she, she's from Ukraine. She said, in my country, we don't restrict movements. It's, it's on Sundays, and we don't do special deployments of security. Now, that could be because they were confident, or they are confident that political supporters would not resort to violence. But for us here, we need to roll out the tanks. We need to do all of this because of the threat assessment. We know that political um, politicians and their followers would resort to threat. So basically, the political class should help security agents. It, it will go a long way. If a, if a leader comes out to say, no violence, I know you are doing it for me, but I don't want it. It will go a long way and it will make our job easier. That's what I think I we should I want to do. follow up on that. And I want to use the analogy of a parent sending their child to school where the school says, please control, your charity begins at home, right? Control your children in school and please make sure when they come to school, they don't disrupt them and breaking glasses and starting fights. 
But beyond that, there's the discipline level of the school. If I tell my child to go and start trouble in school, I know that the principal, the teachers there will, will discipline that child and that should be the deterrent. So is it more of you telling the political class that they should calm their followers down or the followers of the political class being having the fear of God in them that if they, mis if they misbehave or they commit crimes, the police will deal with them. Which of these you're is making it sound You're making it sound like we're abdicating our role of enforcing the law. No, okay. that's not it. We're just saying, um, when everybody's worried that, oh, this keeps happening, keep, this keeps happening, it's not because the police ask the criminals to commit crime. We will do our part. We'll get them arrested. We, we, we're happy to do our job. But for the people out there, we'll say, we'll ask, why do they keep committing crime? Yes, I think they should talk to their people. So the, the two can go side by side. While you talk to your people to shun violence, we will do our part. 23 people um, in our custody now. Um, it doesn't end there. If we see evidence today that this happened on Saturday, I can see pictures and videos. We'll still arrest more and everybody will be prosecuted. Now, there's a political class and uh, their followers, and then there's another very significant group who seem to be growing in influence uh, in Nigeria, and that's the youth. And uh, they're a mind of their own. Uh, now, you know, I don't want to refer back to past events because that was a different, uh, you, you know, a different division of, of the police force. However, let's talk about the sentiment towards the police force. Uh, how do we move from a place where uh, young people see police and feel instant aggression? How can we evolve to young people seeing the Nigerian police force and feeling a sense of support, community and appreciation? Well, that's a good question. And I would admit that um, there is the trust gap between the police and the people, especially the youth. But what most people shy away from is the fact that this trust gap is closing up. It's not what it used to be. Um, now we've made ourselves more accountable. We've made ourselves um, more accessible. Uh, for me, my pinned tweets on my Twitter account is the phone numbers of all DPOs, all area commanders. And I, I, I urge people to call if, if and, and, and this is how it operates in every organization. If someone harasses you in your organization, there's somebody to report to, there's HR to talk to. So in the police, if a if, if police officer stops you on the road and misbehaves, you call his immediate supervisor, who is the DPO. People say, do I need to call before they do their job? But that's what happens. We have complaint channels in every organization. Call the DPO. If the DPO does, some people call and say, oh, the DPO did not um, attend to me well. OK, the DPO is under somebody. It's on the list. Area commander, call the area commander. And um, most times, these things get um, resolved. So what, what was the question? I was oh, yeah, trying to build you've up You've answered it. Well, how we, how we do we actually, close the gap? Yeah, yeah. but we actually Yeah, yeah. So, so this gap is actually closing up. Many people are taking advantage of this, mm. but they will not come back to tell you that it worked. People are more predisposed to complaining that they did this, but they will not come back. But I can confirm to you that it's working and the trust gap is, cl is closing up. Mr. Benjamin Hundain, uh, Public Relations Officer, Police for the Lagos Command. Thank you so much for joining us. And we're looking forward to a safe March 11th uh, gubernatorial election. Yeah.